So what does he decide to do for fun? He takes a bunch of skulls and throws them down the stairs. Here, what noise do potatoes make? Hello, welcome to the channel. My name is Cassandra and this is where I talk about my life experiences and lessons learned to try and help other people who might be in similar situations. So if that sounds interesting to you, then go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. As you may or may not know, I am at the beginning of a very long, very difficult uh, jaw surgery journey. It's gonna take about five years altogether. I'm about to have my third surgery in three months. And again, this is just the start. So there's a lot going on here. And in this video, I would like to do a quick comparison of osteotomy. <laughs> Osteotomy, Lefort 1 and SARP surgical procedures and also give a little honorary mention to MARP because it's a question that I've asked myself quite recently during this journey, what is the difference? Is there a difference? Why would you want to do one over the other? What does it all mean? Why do they use different terms? And I haven't found anything that specific or conclusive that has everything together. Um, so I'm just piecing together bits of information that I have found on the subject to these topics and procedures. But I am not a doctor of any kind. I am not a qualified medical professional. Please do not take any of the information in this video as medical advice, facts, diagnosis or anything like that. I'm just someone on the internet saying, hey, I think I found out a thing now I'm telling you as well. Okay, so always do your own research and understand that I am not in any way qualified. <laughs> okay, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. What is an osteotomy? An osteotomy is really just a surgical procedure that involves cutting into the bones. That's it. So an osteotomy isn't even specific to corrective jaw surgeries. An osteotomy, similar to you know how like osteoporosis is about the bones, osteo to me <laughs> is, is bones, it's cutting into bones and it's any surgical procedure that does that. What is Lefort, Lefort 1 osteotomy, two piece Lefort 1, 5, 700, 3.142. <sighs> Okay, for this, I know that there are three types of Lefort and there are also three types of Lefort 1. So what is Lefort? Apparently, and I don't have this on good authority, I wasn't there, <laughs> but once upon a time, there was a guy named Lefort and he was sitting around one day in his house, just like bored, nothing to do. Maybe it was raining or something like that. So what does he decide to do for fun? He takes a bunch of skulls and throws them down the stairs. And what he discovers is that there is a noticeable pattern to the way that these skulls fracture and break. And he then did a lot more experiments, threw more skulls off the, the roof or whatever. And what he realized is that there are typically three very predictable Lefort fracture lines or patterns uh, that he was able to spot. So Lefort was some guy that discovered these patterns in fractures. So when we talk about Lefort 1, 2 and 3, those in themselves are not surgeries. And that's why you'll hear people talk about, for example, a Lefort 1 osteotomy. It's not two surgeries. It's not two surgeries combined into one operation. The Lefort 1 is describing these fracture lines where the osteotomy will cut into them. So the, the Lefort descriptor is like the, the adjective for the oste osteotomy, which is the procedure itself. So what do you have? You have Lefort 1. Um, so it's all about the, the upper jaw. So <laughs> take out the lower jaw. So Lefort 1 is basically under the nose. And again, this is just the top jaw, so get rid of this. It, Lefort 1 cuts along here. And this is just this. A Lefort 2 is the same thing, but it also adds on your nose. So if you add on where your nose is, 
and then also chop off this bit that we did before. That is a Lafort 2. And then the Lafort 3 is the same as the Lafort 2, but then it also is accounting for your cheekbones. So it's the Lafort 3 is the largest area. And as I say, these then describe um, those fracture lines, which are typically referenced for surgeries, osteotomies, because if those are the natural places where your bones and your skull tends to want to fracture, then it makes sense to work with the nature of your body when you're performing surgeries. Because if you try to go against the natural fracture lines, it's probably just gonna crack in there anyway. Um, so it's better to work with them rather than against them. Go with the grain, like if you've ever sanded wood. So then uh, those are the three types of Lefort, uh, Lefort fractures. And then I mentioned as well that there are also three types of Lefort one. This is the part that I was able to find the least amount of information specifically talking about this. So I am doing a little bit of guesswork. Please proceed with caution. If you know that I'm incorrect, uh, please do add the correction in the comments down below, both for me and anyone else watching. But I think now I, think now I know what it is. So there is the one piece Lefort one, the two piece Lefort one, and then the three piece Lefort one. The one piece Lefort one just cuts along here. So it's just like pop, getting rid of the top jaw. Here we go, here is one piece. What I had wrong, I think, assuming that I now have it correct, I thought that this would be a two piece Lefort because it's like, well, you still have this and then you have this, so that's two. But I think it's like the piece that you could take out. This is like a one piece uh, Lefort one. Then a two piece Lefort one is where they take this, uh, they, they still cut along the same line, but then they also cut down the middle. So then you have like these two segments and that's how you end up with the two piece Lefort one. And then we have the three piece Lefort one. Huh, I wonder how many pieces you end up with there. <laughs> I'm sorry, I think I'm funny. I'm in a good mood today because I watched some videos on my other channel that's specifically designed to cheer me up and put me in a good mood. And I watched myself and I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> And that's why I'm in a good mood today. Anyway, okay, so then with the three piece Lefort one, again, we're chopping off this part. This is always the main thing of a Lefort one. And then instead of also chopping down the middle to have two parts, you also chop here. So then you're uh, kind of splitting into thirds, not exact thirds naturally. Um, I don't know exactly which teeth it goes in between or if it has to go between the same ones, but essentially you then have like the front piece and then the two side pieces, and that's the three piece Lefort one. What are these used for? How many pieces do you want? Why would you want those different pieces? Again, I'm not any kind of doctor or surgeon. This is just based off what I believe to be true, based on my own research. So with the one piece Lefort one, this is mainly used then for moving the jaw back and forth, depending on whether you have an overbite, an underbite, however your jaw needs to be corrected. In my case, it will be moved forward eventually at the end of the five years, maybe in three or four, let's see. For the two piece Lefort one, this I am getting in a couple of weeks because I need a start. I will come on to that in a second. So that is what the uh, two-piece Lefort one is used for so that you can actually expand the top palette. And then the three-piece Lefort one, I believe, and this is the one that I know the least on, I believe it's kind of like a combination of both of them so that you can both expand the palette in, in multiple, at multiple dimensions and then also move it where you want it to be if there's maybe more advanced misalignment or something like that. I believe, uh, obviously it's gonna be more complicated with more moving parts, literally, um, but I believe then it also gives you more flexibility, especially if there's like some asymmetry or something like that. Then by having more pieces, it allows the surgeon more flexibility to do more at once. Okay, great. So that's then the osteotomy and the Laforts. Uh, so the osteotomy is the bone cutting surgery itself. The Lefort just describes the fracture lines. It's not a procedure in itself. And then we have SARP. 
So as I say, I am having syrup in a couple of weeks and for that they will cut along the two-piece Lefort one fracture lines and SARP stands for surgically assisted rapid palatal expansion. So SARP is not surgery. SARP is a procedure that includes both surgery, the osteotomy along the Lefort one two-piece fracture lines and a palatal expander, which is a an orthodontic device that um, clips, squeezes um, onto four of your teeth and it has a mechanism where you like turn a key and it will slowly expand outwards. So SARP is the term that's used for this orthodontic procedure which includes both the surgery and the expansion. You can just have the surgery and not the expander and then call it SARP and you also can't just have the expander and not have the surgery and call it SARP. It has to be both. That is where we have an honourable mention for MARP which I believe stands for mini screw assisted rapid palatal expansion. So this one is not a surgery either, but it is a procedure similarly for expanding the palate or the top jaw, but it does not involve any surgery at all. My understanding is that this is not done so often and certainly not in older patients because the whole thing with needing surgically assisted expansion is that by the time you get to an age of adulthood, your bones, they're kind of done growing. There's not that much flexibility or leeway in there to influence their direction because they're no longer moving. Whereas in children, then it's still possible to have orthodontic intervention without necessarily needing to have surgery. This is the part that out of the whole thing, I know the least about because I'm not having it, so it has nothing to do with me. It's just also a term that happened to come up in my other research that I thought was worth mentioning. Again, just because of the way that I described that SARP, the, the surgery is necessary for SARP, whereas with MARP, that specifically does not involve any surgery at all. Did you get it? Was that good? Did I explain that okay? <laughs> I hope so. Um, yeah, so that's the difference then between the osteotomy, the fort, SARP and MARP. I do hope you found this video helpful. As I say, I'm just a potato on the internet. I'm not any kind of medical professional or doctor, so please don't take my word for it. And if you are a medical professional or doctor and there are any corrections to be made in this video, please do share them in the comments below so we can all become more well informed. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share, comment, subscribe for more, especially about this journey of all the things that I am going through. And I hope to see you next time. Bye.